and do they work in the chronic kidney disease population? So Dr. Bailu is going to enlighten us on the use of statins in CKD patients to prevent the atherosclerosis that you just saw. Thank you. Uh, good morning again. So uh, this is uh, data from case of permanent day again uh, from um, Alan Go and the group looking at estimated GFR and the risk of death as well as the risk of cardiac events. So people with GFR more than 60 have much lower risk of death and less than 15, 14.1 uh, deaths per 100 person years of follow-up. For cardiovascular events, again, GF for less than 15 have about 37 events per 100 person years of follow-up. That's very huge. In fact, in Sprint, uh, which we'll be talking about tomorrow, the, which included high-risk CV population, in that the risk was about 2.1 2.2 per 100 person years. So this is a pretty high risk for cardiovascular events that we see in the uh, CKD group. And if you do autopsy on people with CKD um, and look at their uh, correlate between the GFR and the pr presence of atherosclerotic lesions, again, you see that there is, as the GFR is lower, there's an increased prevalence of atherosclerotic uh, lesions. These are, uh, these are an autopsy study. And uh, the question is whether does it translate into clinical events? In particular, if you adjust for the baseline presence of uh, atherosclerosis. So this is, uh, we looked at about 8,600 people with, who underwent cardiac cath in Utah. These uh, GFR quartiles, we look at 86, 71 to 86, 57 to 70, and less than 57. And looking at the risk for death or AMI, and as the GFR drops, there's a substantially increased risk for death or AMI in people with low GFR. Then when you adjust for the clinical variables, that's uh, diabetes, et cetera, you still see increased risk. And then when you adjust for the baseline, angiographic variables, you still see that there's a higher risk for uh, cardiac events with lower GFR. So all these things kind of mean that there is increased atherosclerosis in CKD. It's a pro-atherosclerotic state. And do statins work? They should work, right? Because you're seeing a lot of atherosclerosis in this population. And there is... Um, uh, these are kind of proof of concept studies that were done before, looking at uh, the different mechanisms through which statins might affect the atherosclerosis in CKD. So one of the studies looking at endothelial dysfunction, and as the cardiologists know, uh, the flow minute dilation is a measure of endothelial dysfunction. And um, these are people who, small study, looking at renal transplant uh, patients, and then uh, they randomized either the flu study or placebo, and they followed for three years. And people who got flu statin compared to placebo had increased uh, flow media dilation, meaning decreased endothelial dysfunction. And endothelin one uh, is the one of the most potent vessel constituents in the body, and. Uh, Statins do affect that. So this is a RCT of 60 type 2 diabetes patients with albinuria, RCT cerevastatin or placebo, six months of follow-up. And uh, what you see is that the plasma content in the, of endothelin 1 in cerevastatin group is high, and then uh, it decreases over time with the treatment. The placebo doesn't change. Same thing with the urinary concentration of endothelin 1. You see that uh, with cerebrostatin, there's a decrease in the uh, endo urinary endothelin 1 excretion. This is looking at the arterial stiffness measured as pulse velocity. In 20 to hemodialysis patients who got fluvastatin, six months of follow up, and you see that 
people who got fluorostatin had a decrease in their pulsive velocity. Of note, in the hemodialysis patients, the mean here is about 1,900 centimeters per second of, uh, for the pulsive velocity. Normally, it's around 800, 900. So this population is pretty high uh, uh, arterial stiffness. They have uh, significant arterial stiffness. And the statins also decrease inflammation. This is looking at uh, the effects of statin on IL-6 production, the peripheral monocytes. So uh, basically take the PBMC and then expose them to LPS, uh, that's a lipopolysaccharide, and look at the production of uh, IL-6. And when you add statins, it, they do decrease the production of uh, uh, IL-6 in response to LPS in CKD. So with all this, you would expect that uh, one with CKD, there's higher uh, uh, preponderance for atherosclerosis, and two is that statins might have some uh, beneficial effects on the physiological mechanisms, and do they work? So this was a 4D trial uh, published in NAJM. It was the RCT of Atorva statin 20 milligram or placebo. They randomized about 400 uh, type, of diabetes, type of diabetes uh, patients with, uh, on hemodialysis. And the primary endpoint was a uh, cardiac composite of uh, death from cardiac causes, non-fatal MIR stroke, and all-cause death was this key secondary endpoint. And as you would expect, when uh, with statin, uh, you do decrease the LDL significantly, and uh, so the significant difference. Interestingly, the LDL declines in the placebo group two down the road. That's a known phenomenon in dialysis patients where uh, it's a measure of nutrition. Uh, you do see that. The median follow-up was four years, and 37% reached the primary endpoint. So, and, of 468 patients. That's about 226 assigned the Atorva study and 243 to the placebo. And as you can see in the Capmaya plot, there's kind of a trend, but hazard ratio is 0.92, and conference error is 0.77 to 1.0 with a P of 0.37. So basically, Atorva study was not effective in decreasing cardiac events in this, part, in, in this trial. So that might be one study. So uh, what if we look at a different uh, agent, different uh, population? So this, uh, the Aurora trial was looking at rosuvastatin, 10 milligram of placebo, 2800 hemodialysis, which included both diabetes and non-diabetes. And the primary endpoint, again, was a cardiac composite, and all-cause death was a key secondary endpoint. Again, Rosso's study was pretty effective in getting the LDL cholesterol lower. And again, you see the trend in the decrease in the placebo group with the LDL over time. And in this study, they also measured CRP, and they noted that um, compared to placebo, Rosso's study, this is the placebo group, that's the Rosso's study group. Rosso's study decreased CRP significantly and so it decreased LDL, decreased CRP, and that's what happened in the outcome. So this was a three-point year of follow-up, and the primary endpoint occurred in uh, 390 patient research study and 408 in the placebo group. Again, there's a small and non-significant benefit of research study. The hazard rate is 0.96. And as you can see in the Capmaya plot, basically not much of a difference between the two groups. So this was the third major trial um, in this area, SHARP trial, published in Lancet. And here they use semester study in 20 versus esti plus estimate by or placebo. It was a much larger study than either one of them, the previous two studies combined. Uh, 90 to 70 uh, patients with CKD. Of that, one-third were on dialysis, 
and two-thirds were non-dialysis. The mean EGFR was 26, so it's a stage four CKD kind of study. And the primary endpoint, again, was a cardiovascular composite. So the median follow-up of, say, 4.9 years on the primary endpoint occurred in 11.3% of the active group and 13.4 in the placebo group. And this is significantly different with the hazard ratio of 0.83 and conference interval going from 0.74 to 0.94. And as you can see, there's a significant uh, risk reduction with the active group compared to placebo. So as I said earlier, the, uh, the SHARP trial, you had people with non-dialysis dependent CKD and, and also dialysis patients, so what happens in those subgroups? If you look at the, uh, this is the MDRD GFR groups, more than 60, 30 to 60, which is stage three CKD, 15 to 30, which is stage four, less than 50 is stage five, not on dialysis. And there are very few people in the more than 60 groups, so, and the conference intervals are pretty wide, but the hazard ratio uh, is uh, towards favoring the intervention. And this is the bulk of the study, uh, uh, the participants, uh, in the 30 to 60 and uh, 15 to 30. In those groups, you can see that uh, the active intervention had about uh, 22 to 25 percent decrease um, the primary outcome. The less than 15, you still have about 10% uh, of the population. The conference intervals are wide, uh, crosses one, but again, small uh, sample size. And you still see there might be benefit in that group too. And if you look at the uh, urine albumin ratio, uh, so less than 30, 30 to 300, which is a microalbuminuria, and more than 300 is albuminuria. Now the nomenclature is uh, high albuminuria, very high albuminuria. Uh, even in, with albuminuria, you can still see that there is a decreased reduction the, of the cardiovascular events with the active treatment. On the other hand, on the hemodialysis, this is pretty similar to what we saw in the other two trials. Uh, a small but non-significant uh, reduction. In PD, petrol dialysis patient, there might be a benefit, but again, small sample size. And the subtotal on dialysis, uh, when you combine these two together, there might be a benefit, uh, but not sure. So subsequently, there's a meta-analysis published in annals, uh, which include which included these studies which randomized in CKD and dialysis patients as well as the large uh, statin trials the general population of the CKD subgroup. So in the, uh, for the major cardiac events, CKD not on dialysis, it's about uh, a 24% reduction for statins. On dialysis, 5% reduction, and uh, conference interval uh, crosses one, and the interaction p-value comparing this to uh, the, comparing this hazard ratio to this hazard ratio, that's significantly different, implying that the effect of the intervention changes based upon the level of the uh, stage of the kidney function. In transplant, it's about 16% uh, reduction. And when you put everything together, uh, the uh, had about 22% reduction in cardiac events with the statins. So this is for all-cause mortality. You see similar pattern to the cardiac events. Sick it not on dialysis, around 19% reduction. On dialysis, 4%, um, not significant, but when you compare these two, the, the interaction p-value is significant. Transplant may be a, uh, may be a harm. And when you put all the trials together, it's around 11% reduction in all-cause mortality. This is another meta-analysis, uh, just looking at the, uh, the different studies uh, in the CKD population alone. Uh, they didn't look at the uh, dialysis patients. And there, 
overall, their uh, hazard ratio is 0.78, uh, favoring st uh, the statins, the 22% reduction in the cardiac grievance with, with the statins. So the bottom line is that statins do work in non dialysis dependent CKD, possibly up to EGFR, say, 15. And however, they're ineffective in chronic hemodialysis patients. Um, as for the PD is concerned, might be beneficial. There are very few studies. Transplant might be beneficial. Very few studies. Um, so there is effect, uh, there's a modification of the effect of the statin by dialysis dependence. Um, so what do you do in dialysis patients? The current uh, kidney guidelines uh, recommend that do not initiate statins if a patient is on chronic dialysis. And there's no data on withdrawal of statins. Adding statin doesn't benefit, does not mean that you can take statin off somebody who was on study for the past 10, 15, 20 years. That's not the same. So there's no data on withdrawal of statins. And um, none of the studies that we talked about really looked at the subgroup which might benefit from uh, statins, that's those with dialysis patients, very high LDL. So uh, more than 190, is it a subgroup that might benefit? Again, uh, I don't think it's going to be a randomized clinical trial. Looking at that, that's going to be pretty hard to do that. So uh, the data is what we have. So what are the explanations for this? Why, why do statins not appear to work in the dialysis population? One is that they have uh, more advanced disease, more advanced atherosclerosis, so it may be too late for statins to have an effect. That's a possibility. And uh, some people have suggested that uh, it's not atherosclerosis that kills dialysis patients, it's arrhythmias, sudden death. It's the potassium um, that they took or whatever else uh, that happened the weekend, that's what's killing them, not atherosclerosis. Uh, while that's a possibility still, uh, sudden death and arrhythmias could also be from atherosclerosis, also from myocardial infarction, myocardial ischemia. So it, that does not, uh, sudden death arrhythmia being leading cause doesn't mean that statin shouldn't work. I think the most important reason is that in this population, um, atherosclerosis is multifactorial. There's so many things going on in this population. And the relative contribution of cholesterol to atherosclerosis may be small. They have a lot of other things that lead on to atherosclerosis, inflammation, oxidative stress, and uh, whatever else. So if you just attack cholesterol, which is a small part of the problem, then you're not going to fix it. So I think that's the most likely explanation. So I stop there. Thank you.